Hey guys, it's Tries here, back with Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds that's literally called the Crapmobile V3. This is my third rendition of creating the worst vehicle in the game with a massively underpowered engine. In the past, I've made my first version of the Crapmobile in the key engine of Automation, the second one I've made over two years ago, and now this one is more horrible than ever. An old body with a small engine, what could go wrong? Anyways, I'll explain the details of this car throughout this portion of the video. It has a lap time of 10 minutes, 49 seconds, 59 milliseconds at the quote-unquote Top Gear test track, 1 minute 38 seconds, 68 milliseconds at the automation track, and has a top speed of 8 miles per hour. This vehicle is powered by a janky 203cc inline 3 engine that produces exactly 1 horsepower and 2 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 0.0, .0 miles per gallon. Yes, that is actually possible now in this game. And it weighs 888.1 pounds, which equals to 402.8 kilograms. And now, let's go over the specs of this vehicle. In terms of how I made my third version of the Crapmobile, the panel material will be made out of regular steel with a ladder chassis also made out of regular steel. With a front launch usual engine placement because it's our only option, and the front and rear suspension both use a solid axle leaf suspension setup with the quality at a negative 15 for pretty much everything that you see here for the quality slider. For the body, engine, and the rest of the car itself. For the engine as I zoom in here... <laughs> Damn, that is small, so we're using an inline 3 engine made out of cast iron, with the bore and stroke both set to 50 millimeters, which gets the engine size for the family capacity at 295 cubic centimeters, with a pushrod header made out of cast iron. And again, as you see here at the engine, negative 15 for virtually everything as you see here. So with the internals and everything, for the balance shaft, we got ourselves a balance shaft because this performs worse than not having a balance shaft. Having it at none will set it to 1.2 horsepower and 2.3 pounds feet of torque, but having balance shafts will lower it down to the final rating of 1 horsepower and 2 pounds feet of torque. And the crankshaft is made out of cast iron with the con rods and pistons both set at heavy duty cast. And for the variant capacity right here, I lowered the bore down to 45 millimeters and the stroke down to 42.5 millimeters to get the final engine size of 203 cubic centimeters. For the compression, it is set at the lowest of 6.0 to 1 ratio, and the cam profile set to a mildly suggestive 69, which is a very nice number, ladies and gentlemen. And the springs and lifters set it down just a tad to a 46. For the fuel system, we're using a single barrel eco single carburetor set up with a compact intake running on low quality fuel, with the fuel mixture set to the leanest as possible of a 15.0, the ignition timing set to a couple clicks up to a 52, and the RPM limit set to a pretty low 3100 RPM. And lastly, for the exhaust and everything, we are using some short cast headers of a single exhaust with the exhaust diameter set to 12.7 millimeters, which equals to a half an inch. And since we're running on leaded fuel, no catalytic converters, but we got ourselves double baffle buffers, the first and second ones. And real briefly, give you a hear to what this engine sounds like right now. Performs a tad much better compared to the frickin' Benz patent motor wagon, I'll give you that. For the drive type, we're running with a rear-wheel drive manual 2-speed setup with the top speed set to 29 miles per hour, even though we cannot reach the speed of 29 miles per hour because, well, you know, the engine sucks, and we got the graph right here showing the top speed of exactly 8 miles per hour for some odd reason. And that's only in the first gear only. This is just downright sad. And if I were to bump this up to a 3-speed, I'll jump the speed up to 13.8 miles per hour, and a 4-speed will bring this up even a little bit further to a 14.2 miles per hour. But this won't matter when we jump this in to BMG Drive, so do a 2-speed and leave it there as is. For the tires, we're running some cross-ply hard long-life tires with the tire width each set to 55 millimeters. This is sad. We're running on the smallest tires as possible for the front and back, but the rim size increased to 12 millimeters, and they're running on some steel rims. As you can see here with the tires, I mean, boy. 
These are like bicycle tires, so they like, uh, let me hide the ho host real quick. Like, look at the tires, man. These are like bicycle tires, maybe like a fat bike type of tire, but geez, this is like inexcusable for a car. Any type of car, to be honest with you. For the brakes, as you can barely see them, we're running on some drum brakes for the front and back with the size set to 160 millimeters. Can you see these or no? Like, oh, hold on, hold on. So getting rid of the rims gets rid of the brakes too. That's interesting. It didn't do that in the last update, but whatever. So inner tray, nothing on the inner tray, no brake airflow whatsoever. So for the interior and everything, as we can see here, there is no interior whatsoever with this vehicle because, well, it's a crappy car. Who needs one anyways? <laughs> So assuming that we do got an interior, we got ourselves some 2x2 two two crappy 2x2 two two seats with a basic interior and no entertainment whatsoever. For the safety and everything, no power steering, no traction aids, and no safety whatsoever, with the weight being optimized to the lightest as possible with this vehicle. And last but not least, with the suspension, pretty basic. Standard springs, twin two dampers, past the sway bars, running on a slightly modified normal preset with the sway bars completely removed to reduce the weight of this vehicle. So despite a handful of problems out here, such as the engine being underpowered, roll angle, high excessive overdrive, rear ride frequency being low, dampers being too hard, load capacity issues, and the rear tires being narrow, let's jump on over to BMG Drive to see if this vehicle does drive and does roll out. So here we are at the map of Grid Map version 2 and taking a brief look at this vehicle here. Well, in terms of the vehicle and everything, look at it all like 1940s, 1950s type of styling. I mean, this does look fairly legit compared to a car made back in the post-World War II days with like the rear end and partially with the front end. And ignoring my version 2 of the crap, will be, I'll go over that in a little bit later. So an overall styling of the front end, rear end, sides, everything. I mean, this looks pretty legit of an old school car from the the front bumpers, rear bumpers, the headlights that will blind you. Well, not like the light I got up in here. This doesn't look too bad. And that's all I got to say with this vehicle here. But the performance of this vehicle will prove it otherwise. So with the version 2, let's go over this briefly. So the version 2 of my crap mobile made, I think over two years ago. Let me look that up real quick. So no, I made this car over three years ago on November 18th, 2018. So yeah, this has been a while since I made this type of vehicle. I mean, the styling and everything looks pretty basic, pretty janky up in here. And I believe the horsepower of this engine was like four point something horsepower. Well, this guy has one horsepower and uh, engine's on. Why are you? Oh no, the car is that bad that it's desperately trying to start up. Let's get it going. Or, okay, you're done. Engine is off. So the engine is that bad that it's quote unquote stalling according to this game? That is stupid. So let's remove the vehicle and take this out for a brief drive to do our time trial. Let's just drive it and then immediately do a time trial run. So how do I do so? Remove others and drive right now. One mile an hour right now. Oh no, four miles an hour. This performs worse than the freaking Benz Patent Motor Wagon that Jimmy Broadbent did at the Nürburgring. If I were to do this doing one lap around the Nürburgring with this car, oh boy, this would probably take me three hours to do it. And we're capped out 11 miles an hour at first gear. Let's go to second gear. The engine dies. <laughs> No, the engine dies at second gear. What if I go to second gear and accelerate? Nothing. For Just don't go to second gear or don't shift. Let's say screw it and do a time trial on this map here to get an idea of like how it drives doing a simple like quote unquote race and half pipes roof. Good handling and strong acceleration. Yes, let's do that. And we're going to do, oh, no rolling start. One lap with this here vehicle. So get you the vehicle and drive you there at this janky ass racetrack with this janky ass car right now. I'm totally going to regret this. So here we are at the start and finish line. And before I go, is I, oh, no. Oh, no. Am I supposed to be underneath like this? This ain't it, Chief. I guess we'll do the um, oval track. Yeah, high speed read oval. Do that. Two laps right now. All right, here we go. Here is our finish line of the racetrack that we got here. So two laps around this course with this slow car. So let's get ready to start this bad boy off in three, two, one. Don't go. Don't rev it. Okay, got that in mind. Three, two, one, go. Perfect. 
We didn't blow up the engine that time. And look at the clutch on my bottom left portion of the screen. It's going. So no matter what, we got to stay in first gear at all times. That is unfortunate. So with this vehicle, even though I managed to get a worse performing engine, like it was the point where I got zero horsepower and zero torque. Maybe, not only that, like negative horsepower, negative torque. By with, with this type of engine set up by increasing, I think increasing the cam profile to like an 80 or a 90. Where you are making half a horsepower and basically when you just start the engine up and hit the gas pedal, you're just losing power all of a sudden. It wasn't going to like move this car one bit. And not only that, with that type of engine, being like a half a horsepower, I think it wouldn't run in Beam and G, but I never tried that out. I think it would with the new meta and everything, with the automation Beam and G exports, new calculations, all that good stuff, but with a half a horsepower engine, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it wouldn't run, even though I seen a video by Forgotten Mustard who made a one horsepower car made back a couple of years ago, and that did run back in the day. But if you're still on Automation 4.1, the previous update, even though I built this vehicle in version 4.2, aka the Turbo Update, which you have to opt in in the beta screen on your Steam library under the Automation game. So if you were to do his tuning with the one horsepower car in 4.1 Automation, the car wouldn't run one bit. It'll just say engine locked up, respawn, engine locked up, engine locked up, engine locked up over and over and over again. So you had to basically just make a two horsepower engine and the engine would just run and you probably get to like the high RPMs or if you quickly let go of the gas that the engine would just stall out. And there goes the first checkpoint, 2 minutes, 16 seconds, 579 milliseconds. I regret doing two laps on here. If I were to complete this, my guess... Oh, we got a little ways to go. So my guess is going to be 7 minutes a lap. So 14 minutes time total around this year time trial run with this vehicle. And now like that, the speed test still stuck at 11-ish miles an hour and we're still counting. I don't want to let go to throttle or I'll stall the engine out and it'll be game over. It's almost the point where I'm tempted to bring out the Wind app, a modded type of app that I got downloaded in Beam and G, and just like jadle the bitch from behind me so I can run this on second gear, but I just want to keep it natural as is right now, capped out at 11 miles an hour. Well, this is currently my worst ever vehicle, I know somebody will just beat me by making like a 2 mile an hour vehicle and make this a downhill only car, and that's it, like a soapbox car. But if they can make an engine that's just downright inoperable, or just flat out the engine won't run, and just make a like a like a soapbox car that looks something like this a 1.8 meter wheelbase body which i believe is the new vanilla body added to the game so yeah getting boring 11.16 we're kind of fluctuating between i didn't do nothing i didn't do nothing and the engine stalled out on me so can we make this checkpoint he go in a spray tempting. If uh, I'm going to make this checkpoint, we're going to do a probably a short downhill only time trial if I can. If not, then oh well. So checkpoint. Please checkpoint. Checkpoint. Good. Four minutes, 28 seconds, 583 milliseconds. I'll just stop right there because that's probably going to be my only time with this vehicle. Let's see if there is a downhill time trial so I can actually get a valid time going with this vehicle. Let me scan through this real quick. If not, then oh well. Well, unfortunately, I can't even find any downhill, like, exclusively or almost exclusively downhill, like, portions of time trials. But instead, let's go to the microscopic short track of Italy, which is the village loop square, whatever this is called. Let me see. Uh, mini village loop. So, one lap around this small track here with this here vehicle, which is going to be, I think it's going to be a straightaway, then kind of downhill, more downhill-ish, and then this big uphill, which is going to be a challenge with this vehicle. Kind of a micro downhill, micro uphill, up and around, finish line right here. So get ready to start off this time trial. Hopefully we can complete this. If not, go to soft subversion. Three, two, one, go. We're not... Ooh, we're not going. Watch the throttle. Are we stuck? Alright, so I got to work with the wind app. Hopefully this is going to be my only time, and we're maintaining at a constant speed of 6 miles an hour. So hopefully this is going to be the only time I'm going to use this app here. So, realistic gearbox, and neutral. What a coast. Engine is off. I don't care. Who even cares? Checkpoint about that. 34 seconds, 910 milliseconds. Make this sharp corner. Not that sharp, but it'll do. And uphill, I'm going to upshift now. Get the gas. Oh. Oh, no. We are... We're, like, going to reverse. 
in first gear at 12 miles an hour. Well, boys, <laughs> we might as well have to cheat again with the wind app, aka the wind exclamation point app. So watch downhill here, 10 miles an hour, uphill here. Let's match this and go. Here. Oh, God's sake. I was doing all good until that happened. So let's see if this method works. I went strong, and now we're going into second gear into... Is it really that impossible to shift a car that doesn't break the engine? Here we go, 130 mile an hour, went to the back, slow down. Uh, do it again. And slow down again. God, five miles an hour, cheating on the uphill with some godlike just wind up in here. Let's see, slow down. Oh, screw this, screw this. We're already there, screw this. Jado the bitch. I'll just meet you there the next car. Coming around the final corner, some cheating had to be addressed, and... Hopefully we can make this without the engine blowing up, so it's gonna be probably a... Oh, we gotta go back to first gear, so first gear. Accelerate, here we go. Hopefully we don't blow the engine. I think it didn't at first, so six miles an hour. Come on, seven miles an hour, please, five. Oh no, we're losing speed, so a time. We're still losing speed of 1 minute 1 seconds, 883 milliseconds of a total time of that right there. So free roam, crash this out somewheres, get me out of here, folks. Oh boy, we lost the wind app, so let's just fake a crash here like I always do at the end of time trial, so let's just back this out. Grab a node, 100% strength, gonna be careful here, and then just eat the bitch here in 3, 2, 1, go. 200 miles an hour, here we go. Eat the bitch as so. Engine is off. And it's still running after I hit. And still running after I hit. And. Oh my god. As we see here, completely bang up this vehicle. We got a loose polygon. It looks like the longest sword in existence up in here or something. And the rest of the vehicle, completely unrecognizable. Let's get this out a little bit better. So, completely unrecognizable from the back end, the side end, the front end, and everywhere end. So, for the final part of this video, let's take you on over to Brutal Slope. Not the campaign mode, I said Brutal Slope to see if this downhill only car will play like a downhill only car. So here we are at the top of the ramp here of Brutal Slope. As we can see here, we got a long ways to go. So let's accelerate right now as we just do that. And I don't care if the engine blows up because it'll blow up right here. And hopefully we get a 0 to 62 time going here right now. So good. 0 to 62 in 7.35 seconds of 247, uh, 274.38 feet. For a car like this, a 40s, 50s vehicle, that seems pretty great. Not the best, but pretty great. So we're stabling... Never mind, we were stable now pretty good. Let me slow down here because, like always, it seems like I have to slow down and... Why am I not... Where's my key bindings? Alright, slowed it down just to keep myself stable and we're getting like a lot of death wobble action up in here. Look at that! At a high speed, we got the death wobble in the rear and front axles up in here. Let me do this a two times because... Bolt felt that base drop, so 140 miles an hour at the bottom. I'm about to go to full time now because we stable off right about here. And the speed of... 65 miles an hour. Not so pretty, but it's doable. Let's get a roof crash going perfectly. Not perfectly. It's still going to be a face-fronting crash, like always. So slow it down, hide the UI as so, and bring it down to 100 times slow-mo. Here's the car, and get ready for the crash here right now. Goes the front. Really mangling the front end pretty good. We got all tires on the ground, the body completely mangled up, and that is all she wrote. So 60 times slow-mo we go. Looks like the rear bumper has flown off completely, including the license plate, it seems like, right? Yeah, the license plate, some of the wheels, some of the other parts, another license plate, and the antenna right here. We'll go to full time. And like that, the car's at a rest, and that tire will spin like a coin. So here is the vehicle as so. The engine doesn't work because what we did earlier. So the final looks of this vehicle, be the, the, the basic structure integrity of some of the body came up pretty well, especially looking at the back end to, like, the back... Uh, half of the vehicle, but more towards the front. Ooh, not so much. Not one bit here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, for the very, very last segment of Brutal Slope and this here video, let's just skateboard the top of the hill here and get a wedge-shaped look going with this vehicle, which is basically crashing at a square block to get a wedge-shaped look of your vehicle crashing at a very high speed. So we're starting to oversteer yet again because how fast we're going into poor aerodynamics this vehicle and how small these tires are to swaying left and right pretty good. So speed, 
149 upon collision according to the airspeed right here. So get it going with this camera. Let's do the weird camera, like insert ourselves into the wall, hide the UI, go. And here's the car creeping along menacingly and bang, here comes the wedge shape and effect. All those parts were just crinkling in and everything, everything got wedged in big time with this vehicle. So nothing else in general, full time. And yes, that is the final look at this vehicle. Let's bring this down to the bottom here. I'm going to F7 it right here and bang that again and really flatten this car like a piece of freaking paper. Not paper, but a paper weight. The most boring flat paper weight. We got oil starvation. Um, who even cares about that? So instead of getting a wedge shaped look at the vehicle, we got a square shaped look at the vehicle. Even worse than like most vehicles would crashing at a high speed right here. So the final look at this vehicle, we are having a seizure right now with the cameras. You can see here it's being inserted in the ground here. More, more oil starvation for some odd reason. And the vehicle, did the lights still work? They do. I just can't explain this one bit here, folks. So yeah, that is the vehicle right there. So that'll do it with automation and BBG Drive with the Crapmobile version 3. Just like the version 1, which I don't have the video of that, which was the key engine version by Crapmobile, basically a Volkswagen Beetle type of car with a horrible engine, to the version 2, around 4.5 horsepower for the 93 engine, and this guy making exactly 1 horsepower and 2 pounds feet of torque. A big difference between those two vehicles, but with this one, is by far the worst ones I've ever made. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos like this in the future, and also check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.